What's up YouTubers? Uh, welcome to the garage. This uh, I hadn't planned on making a video about this. I, I thought this uh, it's a Kohler uh, KT 17, 17 horsepower cast iron twin. Uh, it's off of my, uh, I think it's an 85 wheel horse 4, 17, 8 speed. Uh, I hadn't planned on uh, rebuilding this thing. I thought it was just uh, needing a valve job. It's burning a lot of oil. Um, I'm thinking valve seals, valve guides, maybe worn. Uh, valve stems, I don't know what, but uh, it really runs, ran uh, really, really good, so I didn't think it needed a whole rebuild. It's got about 1,800 hours on it, so I figured it had probably been rebuilt before. That's a lot of hours. Uh, I got into the valve train a little bit and uh, realized that I don't think this thing has been rebuilt, uh, judging by the amount of carbon that's inside of it and the amount of crud that's on and around it. I think this 1800 hours is uh, on the one run, so I'm going to rebuild the whole thing. Uh, I've already started. I wish I would have run the camera from the beginning, but like I said, I thought I was just going to do a valve job. So uh, Here we go. I'll video the rest of this thing. Probably be uh, a few parts. Uh, taking it apart, inspecting it, uh, get new parts and assembly. Uh, you're along for the ride now. we get the flywheel off right now. Okay, these big flywheels can be a real bear to get off. I've already uh, broke the nut loose. Uh, best thing to do is, uh, you know, I don't have a strap wrench or anything to hold this flywheel. You don't want to stick a screwdriver in these fins to hold it. You might break a fin off. Um, an impact works very well. So I've already broke this loose, and I'm just going to back it out maybe a quarter of an inch or so enough to get this thing to pop. Now I'm going to mount my puller on there. Okay, got the puller mounted. There's four 3 8 holes in the flywheel around here. So I'm using two of those for this puller. Now I'm going to turn the big nut here. Uh, I'm going to put some tension on it and then whack it with a hammer. Or, maybe don't have to whack it, it just popped off. So, let me get the pull her back off. Now I left the screw on there for the bolt in there for two reasons. One, so it doesn't just pop and fall right off. And then the other reason is uh, you don't want to damage the threads inside of that hole. So now I'm going to turn it out the rest of the way and pull the flywheel. Like I said, it's pretty heavy. so. Set that down. Now we'll get this uh, stator out of here. Okay, stator is held by these four 5 16 screws right here. I wouldn't recommend using the uh, impact on these. They're pretty darn small. Oh, they will just break. Okay, that gets the stator off. Okay, uh, I decided to pull all this... Uh, mess of wiring, the stator, points condenser, all off at the same time. So, let's see. Starting up here, you've got just the one bolt that holds the condenser on. I'm just going to put the bolt right back in the hole. So I know where it's at. Pulling this all off as one unit is just going to make it easier when I put it back together. There's nothing to figure out then. Two screws hold the points on. bag those screws up. That's something else I need to show you is how I'm bagging and tagging everything. So now all the wiring just stays together and then I'll uh, I'll probably rewire it all. I don't know when I put it back together but that's got those parts off now. Okay, here's what I was talking about bagging and tagging. I just labeled it stator and points and put the screws in there and then I've got a 
a shelf over here that I throw everything on. That's just my way of keeping track of everything. You can find your own way, I'm sure, but that's how I do it. That uh, pin pushes the points open and close, so it can go in the bag. Okay, next is the fuel pump, and there's just two Phillips screws up underneath here. Okay, that's both of those. And then note that uh, this one had a Loctite on it. I assume the other one probably did as well. So, just something to note. There's the fuel pump. I'm going to put it in the bag. Okay, next we're going to pull this uh, other jug off. This is jug number one, jug number two on the other side. And the way you can tell that is jug number one is closer to the flywheel, which would be right here. So everything that comes out of here is getting labeled one and two. Just so you know. So you've got six bolts, or nuts rather, around this thing. And they're all set in there behind the jug where you can't get a ratchet or anything. Uh, you know, you can use this as an offset wrench. It's for a distributor. I guess that'll work to break them loose, but it's still just a hand tool. It's not going to help you out much. A regular uh, half-inch wrench fits everywhere in there. And they'll break right loose. So put a little PB blaster on them. Break them loose, and then they turn right out by hand. Okay, there's the sixth one, so the jug will usually just uh, come out pretty easy. And then I just try to catch the piston as it pulls out. And it doesn't bang on anything, and there's the other jug off of there. Okay, now we'll get the pistons off of it. Uh, there's just a clip on either side. Which you can get with some needle nose pliers and it comes right out. So, there's the clip. Like I said, one on either side. Uh, usually you can get away with just taking one out and then get a small screwdriver to the other side of the piston and slide that pin out. Usually, not today. You gotta be careful because you don't want to scratch the, the bore inside of that piston either. See a little better. And that one went flying, which they'll do, but that's okay because we're going to replace those anyways. Kohler wants them to be changed with the rebuild. Okay, and then there's the piston is out of there. looks really good too. So I'll get the other one out and then we'll get the closing plate off. Okay, closing plate is fairly simple. Just a bunch of half inch bolts around the face of it. Alright, with all of the bolts removed, it should pry off fairly easily. Should. a bit of loving but it's loose. Okay. Now 
now set this in the bolts aside. Okay, with the closing plate off, you can see there's a spring here that's going to come out, and then with the magnet in there is a check ball. So I'm going to put that with the bolts, bag it, and tag it. Okay, over here, this is the camshaft bore plug. And what we're going to do is score a line on there so we can get it back in the same orientation. So, I'm just going to scratch a line across it just like that. Okay. Now, we've got to get all of these bolts out. And they are usually uh, pretty tight. So I'm going to take a half inch socket and a ratchet and I forgot to get out and just start breaking them all loose. So, get them all broke loose, take them all, all of the way out, and once I get to that point, we'll come back here. Okay, I counted 13 bolts and 2 nuts so far. I think that's all of them. Now what I'm going to do on the number 1 cylinder, I'm just going to put a zip tie around the tappets. No, 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 no. Number two cylinder, I'm on the wrong side. Number two. And that's going to hold them from falling out when we split the case. Now you're going to want to lay it down with the Number two side up. And we're going to start trying to pry it apart. So let's get. Decent looking pry bar. There are several places to pry. Okay. I don't know what fell. Hopefully nothing important, right? Okay, can plug is in there still. Okay. So there's that case half. I'm gonna set it over here. Now we can lift the cam out. There you go. I'm gonna set it over here. So this has got sleeve bearings here. There's a, a uh, roller uh, thrust, thrust 
bearing there, and there's the oil seal there. So we'll just set this aside now. Okay. I'm being careful not to let the tappets fall out. Uh, when you take the tappets out, they're, they're probably going to be fine. So they will get reused. Uh, you just want to label which cylinder and then intake or exhaust when they come out of there. Next, I think I'll pull the rods off and then maybe we'll come in and uh, look at the oil pump and check everything out there. Okay, a couple of things before we pull the rods off. They have match marks here. You can see these two arrows that will line up when it goes back on. So we don't need to mark that, but they will need to be marked cylinder 1 and cylinder 2. Uh, what I'm doing is just throwing them in a bag labeled 1 or a bag labeled 2. So, simple enough. Uh, before we pull it, I like to check the side clearance, which is how much space you have between the crank and the rod. The spec is 5 to 16 thousandths and you just check that with feeler gauges in between there. So this is, I'd call that uh, 13 thousandths is what I'm measuring. Check them both. Same thing, 12, 13 thousandths. So as far as that goes, these are, are good to reuse, but we'll have to check the inside diameter later. So a couple of 7 16 nuts. Just back them off. Right about the end of the stud like that because we're probably going to have to... No, never mind. Usually you have to tap these with a hammer to get them to come apart. These are coming right apart though, so... Two nuts off. Gently remove that. Cap back on just like it came off. The rod and the journal both look real good. So now I'll get the other rod off. Remember, one is closest to the flywheel end of the crankshaft here. So I'll get these nuts back on there, I'll get the, this one uh, in the bag, get the other one off, get it in the bag. If not, you can tap it lightly with a plastic hammer. You just don't want to scratch that crankshaft at all. Rod cap back on there, and there again you can see there are the, the match marks, so... Put a couple nuts on here, throw it in my bag labeled 2. Okay, I think we're going to conclude part 1 right there. I'm going to get some oil on these journals. Um, I want to oil up the, the camshaft lobes real nice, uh, keep them from rusting, oil the cylinders. Any of the uh, bare metal precision machine parts, you just want to get some oil on it. Uh, it will rust up very, very quickly. So I think we'll end part one right there. Like I said, I will come back. Uh, I'll do some cleanup, and we'll start inspecting everything and go from there.